Okay, I'd like to look at a simple problem like this. So I'm going to have a bar. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this out while I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I've got a bar that's one, me that's one meter in length um, and has a mass of two kilograms. There's a pivot a quarter of the distance from its end. And I'm going to start it in a horizontal position and let it fall down to the vertical position. Um, and I'll find out what its angular speed is when it, when it reaches that vertical position. Okay, so it's going to start out horizontally, sort of like that. And um, I said that this is one meter. From here to here is one meter, right? So that's one meter. And a quarter of the way along its length, one quarter there, that's where I have my pivot. Um, and the mass is going to, is going to, um, the weight is going to be focused here at the um, center of mass right there. Uh, so that's the weight coming down there. So, so this is sort of what I've got going on. I've got this guy and he's going, this guy is going to turn around this point. So this bar turns around this point and this force is going to make it turn this way until it's um, horizontal like this. So I can draw that out too. Sort of like that. So it's going to end up over here and the weight's just gonna fall um, downwards. So the question here is, is what, it's, was is what is its angular speed here if it starts at rest here, right? That's what we wanna know. So uh, let's see how we're going to approach that. Well, we want to know what we know, right? So um, let's identify the parts of the problem. Uh, what do we know, right? We know that we have a bar and that bar has a length and a mass. Okay. And then we're going to allow it to fall from rest um, so that it, so that it um, comes down to the vertical here. And so it's going to pivot around uh, this spot here. So distance from its end and it's or and it will change in or it change its orientation okay so it will have an initial orientation right um a final orientation And it will have an initial angular speed. And I think those are all the things we actually know. So the length is L equals one meter, right? Right there. Its mass is M equals two kilograms. We're okay with that. Its distance from its end is one quarter of the dis uh, or the, the distance the pivot is one quarter of the distance from the end the end is um one meter so it's one quarter of a meter or 0 0.25 meters however you like to do that um, the initial orientation theta i is going to be horizontal this way uh, that's zero radians Final orientation will be pi over 2 this way, right? Positive is um, counterclockwise, this is clockwise. So it's either 3 pi over 2 or minus pi over 2, okay? Uh, the initial angular speed, it's falling from rest, so omega i is equal to 0 uh, seconds to the minus 1, okay? So that's, that's what we know, and we've got a lot of extra room up here, so I'll do the find here find um, its final angular speed, omega f, okay? 
Remember, you need to name each one of these things both um, both in words and in symbols, and so word symbols. And you'll also need to um, give me the values for each thing if you know them. All right. Um, so let's see what sort of concept. What? How should I do this? Well, if this were a um, if this were a problem with, um, say, a ramp and we're finding the speed at the end of the ramp, we'd use conservation of energy. And in fact, that's what we'll do. We'll use conservation of energy. And um, that should be a good enough way to work through this, right? Uh, then we'll use an equation. Um, conservation of energy says kinetic plus potential at the beginning is equal to kinetic plus potential at the end. Simple simple enough, right? So we're doing pretty good right now. Um, so now what are we going to need to know? Um, this kinetic energy is going to be in, is going to be rotational because it, because it, you know, this rod is stuck to this pivot. It's not shifting left and right or anything like that. So because it's stuck to this pivot, all of the pivot, all of the kinetic energy is going to be rotational. So that's going to mean we'll need the moment of inertia. And pretty much after that, I think we'll have everything that we need. So let's start off our answer um, with one, find the moment of inertia. Now, we don't have um, this in our lookup table, right? We have a nice table where we can look these things up. Um, we've got two ways we can deal with it if we don't know what, if we, if we don't know what it is, we, what we can't, if we can't just look it up on that nice table. Uh, one is to do the integral, and the other is to use the parallel axis theorem. Um, for the parallel axis theorem, what has to, what has to happen is that this point has to be, uh, this pivot has to be just a direct translation from some something that we already know that's in the lookup table. Um, in fact, what we care about is we, we have to know what's going on from the center of mass. We can always calculate the um, moment of inertia around the center of mass and then use something called the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia here. So we'll find the moment of inertia here. We can just look that up. Um, and then we'll use the parallel axis theorem to um, find the moment of inertia of this object in this configuration with this pivot. All right. Uh, remember what we said from the reading um, that the, that the main important difference in this concept of the moment of inertia and the inertial mass is that the inertial mass is an intrinsic property of your object, right? It's a property of your object, you can't um, get rid of it. Um, whereas the moment of inertia depends on where the motion is, where the motion is actually centered around, okay? Uh, which, makes it, which makes it dependent completely on your problem. Um, so we're gonna find that moment of inertia I, and like I said, this is, this is going to be equal to the I from the center of mass plus whatever we get from the um, parallel axis there. And that's what we get from the parallel axis there. Um, so around the center of mass, we can look that up. That's 1 12th ML squared. And um, for the parallel axis theorem, we have this m, and we can do this d two ways. I could throw this number in, but I haven't put the number in here, or I can just say this is one quarter of the length. So that's L over um, four squared, right? Which is equal to um, 1 12th plus 1 16th ML squared. And that ends up being equal to um, 7 48 uh, ml squared. So that's our moment of inertia for this particular problem. Um, now that we have the moment of inertia, we can actually use that to find the rotational kinetic energy. So now we'll conserve our energy 
and by conserving our energy, we'll be able to solve the problem. We can solve the problem with the conservation of energy. So let's see, we have kinetic energy plus potential energy for the initial state, right? The initial state is um, kinetic energy one half I omega I squared. Uh, this is zero, omega I is zero, right? So we're okay. So this whole thing is zero. Uh, then we need the um, potential energy of this thing. Um, and the best way to do that is just to use mg, and then we have to have some way of talking about this height. Uh, we'll talk about, we can talk about that height is just the y projection, right? So the y projection is going to be um, L over two, Right, because this is or L over four, so this is just D. I should just write D. D. So it's D because this is going to be the thing that's moving around here, times sine of theta i. Right. And I just said theta i is zero as well, so that's zero. So so the initial energy is um, zero. Um, that's because we're free to choose uh, zero for the um, potential energy. And I've basically just chosen that zero for the potential energy to be the initial position. Okay, so that's equal to uh, Kf plus Uf, the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy, uh, which is one half I times omega F squared. And this is what we're looking for, right? This is what we want to know. Um, plus MGD sine of theta F. Okay? Simple enough. Um, which means it's time for us to actually solve, right? Uh, let's see, I'll just say solve. All right, so let's see, omega F squared. So, so that thing is equal to um, minus MGD, right, sine theta F over one half I, right? Um, so that means omega F is equal to uh, let's see, the square root of, um, I'll go ahead and use this thing for i here. So that's going to be 7 96ths, right? So that's 96, 96 sevenths um, times mg d sine of minus pi over 2, so sine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1, so I'll cancel that minus 1 with that, and then divide this um, by L, m l squared from here, all right? So I think we're doing pretty good right now. Um, so if we've got that, now we divide by, okay, well, D is actually L over four, right? So we divide this guy now by four, and we get the square root of 24 sevenths. The M's cancel, one of those L's cancel, G over L. Okay. Um, and so that's 24 sevenths, 9.8 meters per second squared over one meter. And that is just going to be a number. And that number is five point seven nine five six seven uh, it's five point eight let's say five point eight 
um, seconds to minus one. Okay, so it's 5.8 hertz, all right, is the um, angular frequency. I guess that's not really hertz, all right. So, let's check, all right? Let's see what's going on with that. Um, well, I only want to do one check for this, and that's, you know, the units are in, um, inverse seconds, or ra radians per second, which is correct for omega f. And that's good. Um, this number here is really, really close to being about, um, you know, it's a little bit less, it's a little bit faster than one revolution per second, or 60 revolutions per minute. Um, I really don't have any idea. I, th I think that sounds pretty close. If I were to actually just drop it and see what how fast it went down, that looks like it would be pretty close. Uh, but I'm not completely sure, so I'm not going to um, talk too much about that. We can actually time that in class if you want to. Um, because I can make this happen uh, in class, I think. So um, that looks pretty nice to me. I, I think I think that's um, one way to take care of these energy sorts of problems. Um, remember the the um, rotational kinetic energy is just a part of the kinetic energy. There's nothing different about it, right? It's just something we use for the rot rotating part, right, of our um, of our problem. So I think that'll do for now, and I'll see you in class.